Hello, hello, people of the internet. It's your boy, Skinny Penis. With another <clears throat> triple A, you know, new tier 10, new video. We're playing defense. I have played it a bit before, you know, so I know what the ship can and cannot do, kind of. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about it. And, um, well, the LDR of the video, uh, it is not worth the amount of resources you have to put in to get it neither is kitakami i mean kitakami is even worse in terms of uh what you have to pay for it and what you get in return but um defense also not um i think also that most let's say like ccs or people that made videos about it essentially in my opinion bait people into buying it because they say it's worth it uh, because the guns are extremely strong uh, but sadly everything else about the ship is just shit and if you break it down to a is it really worth it level of uh, of uh, purchase decision, then I would definitely say it's not, because um, Marseille offers the same, just better, and Stalingrad kind of offers something similar to also just better. So what's the big issue with uh, defense? Well, in order to get high caliber guns that are ins insanely accurate and have extremely high HE penetration and fire chance. I mean, 41% fire, great dispersion, 89 millimeters of pen, you pen everything, and you have correct dispersion. In order for that, you drop like everything that makes Marseille and Stalin good. You don't have the platings to tank, uh, you don't have the maneuverability of a Marseille, um, and you're extremely high on the water while not having armor. Uh, on top of that, you're also extremely sluggish and immaneuverable as a ship. Uh, you're extremely susceptible to submarine and carrier attacks like crazy because you don't have the maneuverability and uh, neither do you have any sort of AA and you also have the issue of um, look the carrier is already coming for me um, and you also have the issue of uh, oh is he going to fuck me with the tiny tombs? 5.6k, uh, it starts again. Every single game with defense where I have a carrier, I just suffer. Uh, the ship is extremely shit against carriers. I'm I'm just too fat, large, and have no armor. So you don't have the platings. Like, uh, Stalin gets platings. Um, Marseille has essentially the same armor scheme, kind of, that you do. But it sits way lower in the water, and it's way more maneuverable and agile. Uh, also, it offers way less superstructure. So, yeah, Marseille is just a better hull. And um, here you can see, in like, if you compare Marseille to a defense people complain about the marseille gun performance but the defense gets the consistency i mean it doesn't get the shell count but it gets supposedly better consistency it doesn't really matter that much because you only have six shells marseille has nine so even if marseille is not as consistent it still has more shells so you see what happens when you get, go more into guns um, but drop survivability and maneuverability on the hull um well it's just shit uh, it is just straight up bad. Um, the torpedoes are an insane idiot bait, by the way. Um, it's pretty nice to have them. They're also extremely nuclear. I have the torpedo skill on them. Now I have a damage buff. They do 26k damage, uh, which is great uh, on paper. Sadly, your hull doesn't really support any sort of gameplay around the torpedoes in most scenarios. Um, yeah, well, overall, I just really, really dislike the ship. Um, I could go as far as even say I hate it. Um, it's it leads people to believe it's strong because if idiots turn consistently flat in randoms or BBs ignore you or it's just like tier 8, 9 BBs, you can kind of smash them. But the moment you play against some competent Vermont player, Ohio player, Vincent player, whatever the fuck, that has aim and good position, you're just unable to play the game. Um, that's how bad it gets. Um, well, yeah. I mean, let's see what this game gives to us but yeah you can see the dispersion is great uh the ap has improved pen angles it also has the shorter fuse from the battleships i think um you can get great volleys um here for example 7.6k if the two other shells would have penetrated too kind of like a uh a crazy uh 13 14k volume maybe so people tend to believe it's actually a very strong ship um yeah, I can only say it is not. It is just not. I get the same gameplay with Marseille, but Marseille has way more repurposability on um, on uh, flanks in terms of kiting, for example. 
while defense is like an extremely, extremely, extremely bad kiter. It does not want to kite at all. Um, everyone is running into base too. Uh, the map here is actually quite strong for us uh, in a defense because I can hop from island to island and seek cover, which is kind of the gameplay you uh, want to have in a defense. It's it's an island camper because you just said like kiting or so is not really smart. Um, the issue is something like a Stalin is just more consistent on islands because it has armor and it brings radar so you can zone certain ships from your position defense cannot uh, defense gets the same kind of uh, let's say survivability or zoning through a smoke but the smoke doesn't allow you to to shoot and it's a defensive tool while the radar is an offensive tool which is just better to zone people or uh, keep uh, certain ships away from you that could potentially fuck with you um, so yeah, now you have a battleship kiting in base, um, the Thrasher is somewhere on my right, as you can see, they're already torping me. Uh, I have to chase people now, um, I have a fast, oh actually yeah, the, the heal is a bit faster uh, cooldown uh, than usual. So those Thrasher torps are just going to murder me now, uh, nothing really I can do. I think they can home in. I mean, I can drop maybe my SW and see what happens. Um, I have to somehow get into the cover of... Uh, oh, uh, uh, Ohio just uh, points and clicks me. Um, supposedly, you do have, uh, on paper, 40mm deck armor. Sadly, that shit doesn't really do much for you. Like, it's literally like some non-existent shit. Um, side plating is so fucking thick and big. You just get punched uh, on the side plating most of the times. So, um, well, the torpedoes are just going to kill me. I have a kill, 9k damage. Um, oh well, I think... Uh, is it is it going to kill me? Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm dead. And we go next. Um, nothing really I can say. The ship is just dog shit. Um, I wouldn't get it, honestly. I'd play Marseille instead, um, at least I'd had some maneuverability there to break dance around, I have a speed boost, uh, I have a reload boost. Um, I'm, I'm sluggish, I'm fat, I don't move around in defense. And submarines for some reason or carrier games are just the worst in this thing. Um, like, maybe I should have, like, I mean, you know, you can always camp in base in these kind of games there. Or I could have taken the... the Two, three minute trip to the border first and then turn in and I would have stayed alive but to be fair I can't be bothered with this ship uh, or in general like um, I want to play the game I want to fight people actively I want to fight for objectives I want to I want to trade HP I want to lock down uh, areas and play for map control the enemy just kites into base I mean yeah you just suck in a defense mm. so I can only sum it up with um, you can't really bring flank playstyle in it because the moment you're stuck nose in you're extremely bad and you suck kind of because uh, you're just not tanking a lot um if you kite um i mean you can get away you can disengage with your smoke but your gun angles obviously are bad because like pretty shit because everything is in front and you have a very weak ass and also the, all the entire superstructure is on the ass it's kind of like a vincent kiting it's way easier to he spam or penetrate with ap and stuff and um murder than a vincent that's nose in it's kind of the same here uh the issue is though that uh, your nose is enormous gigantic we can go over the spec um after the game i mean the only thing i would probably switch at this stage is just play survivability expert instead of the torpedo skill. But as you can see, there's like barely any situation where you can uh, get the torpedoes out. Um, most BBs are an extreme hard counter to you. Um, the, also like the concealment is kind of whatever, 10-1. The problem with the concealment is, I mean, your gun bloom in a smoke is more than your concealment. I don't even think there is any ship in the game apart from BBs that have achieved that stupidity where the gun bloom in a smoke is more than your concealment your base like by far so, um 
So yeah, now we sit on the next rock. Um, we farm. We hope that our DD keeps it lit. It's, I mean, obviously you need a destroyer to spot for you. Uh, otherwise you can essentially cut the idea of uh, the raider. Why, why I'm going to reverse and help my some, some maybe. Uh, the submarine is here again. Um, as you can see here too, uh, you just don't boast the DPM to deal with anything quick. I mean, you do have fire chance and penetration. But it's not like you're magically going to win a, a battleship 1v1 with your DPM. So BBs become big, uh, even a, a bigger problem than they were originally. I mean, my alpha here is nice. And since he's not moving, he's probably gonna uh, take a bunch of shit. I mean, I don't know why he's lit that close. I don't know why he's lit in the first place, to be fair. No one is shooting him though, like some people just want him to survive or something. There you go, kill him. I am on a... On multiple fires. I think I can smoke here and I go dark, yeah. I can load a... I can load AP now. I mean, this is kind of a good situation because the Schlieffen cannot come around me. Uh, uh, yeah, around on me uh, because of the torpedoes. Uh, only thing is he can actually... Um, oh, there's something else. Ah, yeah, the submarine, I remember. Um, so, you also have to keep in mind that uh, your shells are way more lazy than Stalin or Marseille. Which is kind of like, even if the guns are consistent, have a lot of penetration because of the caliber on HE and AP, your shells are too lazy. Like, you don't have good arcs. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just... I personally don't think it's worth it at all, this ship. Like, I mean, look, I'm just taking shit from everyone. I am a massive clunky piece of trash on the cruiser, uh, on the on the rock now. Um, the submarine is permalighting me. I cannot use my smoke. Um, yeah, it's just like... There's 50 different reasons. Like, this guy is just now randomly turning flat, as you can see. Look at this. He he has no reason to turn flat, but he does it anyways. And my guns are extremely accurate. So now I get a big bunch of damage uh, salvos. Um, maybe even killing him now. No, like two, 30k into 20k. And now people think the ship is good. It's like, the Salem had no reason to turn flat. He, ha he did not. He did not. There was no reason for him to do this and like just because he's stupid and my guns are accurate and big caliber uh, it makes it look like the ship has potential and it's like no it does not it does not like look how long it takes me to go back and forth by the way uh, in the ship it's something i really dislike you're somehow less maneuverable on a rock than the russian cruisers while the russian cruisers have radar and uh Better armor, but like, I mean, I don't really get the point of it. Okay, the the stupid submarine is, uh, I mean, look, the submarine could have spotted me the entire time here, even in a smoke. There's nothing I could have done and these people could have killed me already. So to sum up this game, uh, the Salem donates nearly 60k to me because he goes flat when he doesn't have to. The submarine could have lit me the entire time, which he didn't do because he's a bit stupid. Um, my SOM for some reason runs away, which doesn't make sense uh, either. Um, oh wait, we have the submarine now here. Maybe I can actually hit him. It's a, it's a, it's a, what is it, an, an S, uh, S... 189 that thing is like a uh, essentially like a tier 8 gado so it's trying to potentially shotgun me or like uh, look 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 how lazy the shells are long travel time at 16 though also like there's no reason to by the way slot range mod on this um like a stalin and a marseille just have these insanely flat strong arcs and uh you can abuse that to to smash people flat way easier. And now now, now it's the situation again where everyone's kiting. And the sub is again on my... This doesn't really matter if it's a sub, like last game or this game or a DD. Like, I cannot do anything against it. Like, I cannot spot myself. Um, so, essentially... 
I'm just the bitch of the sub and or DD and I have to hope that my teammates are doing something against it. Issue is, as I said, like you're not really a good kiter at all. So um, the way you dodge these engagement and like cruisers that normally can't spot four spot submarines and DDs with radar or something like a, a, let's say a Hindenburg or a Goliath, they can at least kite. Like they're, I mean, they're also designed around kiting. Um, so I could at least get some value because the ship itself is designed around kite. The ship here is designed to go to islands. I mean, you can kite with it and get mad average damage because you can do that with any ship. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. But um, yeah, the, I mean, I don't know. I played it for like 20 games now also and I got like maybe three, four torpedo hits overall. Um, you barely get any torp hits. So this is like a situation where the ship looks like insanely strong. Because I can just uh, push into a tier 8 battleship that has like no means of really doing much against me. Because it also doesn't overmatch my side plating and it doesn't have a lot of guns. So I can just run him over for free. I get a bunch of cool, uh, cool uh, achievements. And like, I don't know, makes me believe that the ship is good. Meanwhile, it's absolute piss. Like, not good. It's just not. This this kiting scenario here, by the way, is not even. Um, it's not even that problematic for Salem or Hindenburg to angle up to me and shoot me because at that range, it's very unlikely, very very unlikely that I hit them. Um, so I guess like the best way to play the ship is you just play kite and use your smokes to like mitigate incoming damage and you just farm because clearly the the nose in playstyle on rocks especially if you're solo in randoms is like not really working at all um i would not advise to do it and yeah i mean personally i think the bison already said he doesn't understand the hype on the ship because he personally didn't think it was that good at all um and I think he's also, he was also kind of like the only one who actually got it right. I mean, I didn't have access to the ship in testing or anything. Um, so I was like, hmm, let's wait. Uh, looks kind of okay. Maybe even strong. But now that I played it, it's it's a heckin' disaster. Bison was absolutely right. Gotta give him that. The ship is overhyped and people are getting baited into getting it. For no fucking reason at all. Um, because it has the potential to smash people in randoms if they behave like idiots. Um, like, like this game, for example. I mean, I fight against the tier 8 BB here. Right? And, uh... Um, I had a Salem flap broadside the entire time. Um, I had a SOM that spotted for me, so I wasn't the fucked guy. Against all of these people. Um, yeah, but now I have no heals left. I can pop some smokes. I can maybe hope that I can cheese a kill here on the Tallinn or so, steal it or something. So I get my, um, what's it called? My Cunningham proc, which would be important now, because it would give me at least one more heal. So I can maybe trade out like Salem or so, nose in. Because I need some more HP to actually achieve that. Uh, there you go. The shells are so lazy, it's actually like extremely annoying to deal with it in the first place. And... I have to keep this amount of distance at least, so I don't get proxy spotted in my smoke. I mean, they don't have a DD or, um, or a submarine left, so I'm pretty fine here, kind of. But, yeah. It's not really like a fun experience, I'm just gonna say it like that. Um, I don't know the exact numbers as to how much it's worth. Um, in terms of, or how much you have to invest in terms of resources to get it, but I can only tell you that it's way too much for the for the effectiveness that the ship brings. Like, I'd, I'd, as I said, much rather play a. I'd much rather play a Marseille or a Stalin, and it's just, in my opinion, a straight up better option uh, or ship. Okay, I got my. My Cunningham proc, which is really good. Actually getting more uh, more healing potential. This guy is again flat for no reason. Maybe he even stays flat. Wouldn't know. 
could get Citadel here. Uh, he seems to be going those in now. Uh, thankfully, he's already extremely low. Um, I'll just load my HE. And it should have enough alpha fuck with him. This is, by the way, one of my best or better uh, um, defense games for sure. Like, um, it was actually way better than some of the games I have had. Way, way better. The average game I have is absolute pain and suffering. So, yeah, this is a welcome surprise. But as I said, this is just kind of what baits you into believing the ship is worthwhile when it's not. It's kind of the same as if you play Marseille. You will also get into many situations where you can't really do much because the Marseille also doesn't get radar. Um, and it's also like not as heavily armored as some other ships. So, I mean, look, it's like, look how long I have to, to shoot him. I mean, look, this guy went flat, so he took 10 million sit damage, so he has no healable potential. But if I was like just fighting him straight up, how do I kill him? Well, I don't. I just can't kill him. It's really, really bad. I mean, I can just go into their base and block it, probably. And then we can go AFK. I don't really know what to say about this ship. I mean, super ship matchmaking is also obviously a big issue. Um, lots of cruises are a big issue for you, because, um, you're, as I said, you're so fat and maneuverable that if they kite you or they're kited in front of you, you cannot really commit on them and kill them. You just take too much damage. Um, 30 overmatch BBs are obviously a disaster, especially high shell counts. Um, any BB close range is a disaster um, because you have 25 nose. So, like, as I said again and again, the play style or the ship's hull and uh, the gun, um, the gun layout or turret layout and the torpedoes and everything essentially force you to play close range on rocks, but the maneuverability in the hull don't support it at all. Like, they don't. You don't have an icebreaker, 25 no's, every BB overmatches you, um, you're super high in the water, any any sort of, like, you have improved pen angle. The problem is any sort of cruiser with improved pen angle shits on your hull too. Like, you're not tanking these people. It's just impossible. Um, so, yeah, like, I don't know, man. Overall, it's just, it's just super weird. And you have these lazy shells. Um, look at it, how much I let so much and they land behind him. Barely hitting his ass, that's unsaturated, luckily giving me 4k. I can shoot again. He just makes a slight turn in, it falls behind him. Oh no, actually it hits his nose again. Oh, okay, he turned in a bit. Weird. Like 4 kills and... 230k damage. Um, actually, one of the best games I had in it. Not gonna lie. But a bunch of uh, rewards even for tanking a lot. I'm going to quickly show the spec. So, I mean, it's a normal cruiser spec. You can't really take anything else. Uh, the only thing I would change at this stage is this for survivability expert. I mean, wait a minute. I'll, I should just do it in any case. Instantly. I just haven't found any sort of situation where the torpedoes are great. Um, I can't sustain the spots that I want. To. And also, like, most people don't really face you nose in because people in World of Warships don't play nose in. And here we have uh, modules, as always, same thing. Um, I would obviously always run reload on it. Um, there is no real point in running range. You have more than 18, but your shells are so lazy that you can't really fight above 18. So yeah, let's go for a last game, because the first one was essentially just a suicide. Maybe we have some interesting situations. Oh yeah, it's uh, actually great matchmaking. Um, tier 8. As I like though, I'm going to say it straight up, I wouldn't buy it unless you have uh, tons and tons and tons of resources laying around. I mean, obviously, if you have million, like a million or more coal and you already have everything, 
if you have a hundred case, whatever the fuck, like if you have resources laying around, you can get it. But the reason for this would be the same as like a tier 10 dockyard that sucks. Like it's a tier 10, so you want to have it. Um, is it worth it to sell your left kidney for um, like a Kida or Kida Kami and defense? No, no. Both ships are actually really underwhelming for the amount of uh, resources you have to spend on them. That's for sure. And I'm not going to sit here and have a great game last game and this game can be good too because uh it's tier eights um tier eight ships generally uh they can't really harm me that much um i'm not gonna sit there and then pretend that the ship is great uh just because it has potential and then matchmaking works out nah it's just not what i want so like in this game there's virtually only one ship that hard counters kind of and that's the hindenburg kiting me uh, that dumpster's way too much HP into me, and it's way too easy for him to hit me. Otherwise, the battleships all don't overmatch my side and deck. So as long as I keep a, a bit of distance to them, it's, let's say, unlikely. They smash me through nose. Um, it's clearly possible, though, especially against tier 10 BBs with high shell count. You will eat more and more nose sits the more you play the game. And shit like that is, I mean, obviously really frustrating. Because, look, if I play a Des Moines and I get nose sit by 30 overmatch or non-30 overmatch, like I can understand it because the thing has hydro, the thing has a 10 km raider that lasts for 20 years and the thing is, uh, but but in return it's also slim and agile with ledge mod so you can peek and uh, disengage, you can engage and disengage around corners with the ledge mod, um, you can bring utility, uh, you have uh, crazy DPM especially against DDs um or light cruises and shit meanwhile this thing here i mean again carrier deals 50 million hp or damage to me can't really do much um i mean i just i just don't see the point of the ship to be fair we have a submarine spotting for us enemy also has a submarine in the cap so I don't know, maybe let's drop a depth charge, maybe we hit him, we have some in reserve anyways. Hydro is ready, cap is blocked, let's peek it. I mean, maybe maybe I should have kited out, would have helped. So this is a U4501, a U2501, which means he doesn't have ass warp, so he has to stay like nose into us. I don't think I can lob this, can I? Oh. So the... Oh, well, the Izumo gets angle on me. Matches me for a bit. Kinda tank it for now. By the way, the AP is something you can even deal damage to people with if they're like heavily angled. Um, because you have sh shorter fuse, have improved pen angle AP. So it's uh, really strong even against angle targets. The issue is people tend to then load AP way too much. And uh, overall, you're not gonna deal as much damage as if you just take the HE alpha you have. And, uh,. Burma burn people into the ground. But yeah, this is the playstyle here, as you can see. You sit on an island like any other Des Moines or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, Stalin, Petro, even Marseille plays like that. If you want it to be. So. Oh. Submarine is uh, obviously trying to kill me. If he does so, then so be it. I um, mean, yeah, I'll just go next. I uh, don't really mind anymore at this age. <laughs> yep, I'm dead. Or like, probably dead. Oh. Very nice. Uh, I mean, supposedly I cannot play the game. Like, I mean, the moment the sub is here, it's definitely stupid. It's my, it's my fold on paper that I peek this, because you should not. Like, it's impossible to do. Um... Because the submarine has the easiest time shitting you here, but look, I mean, if I had a Marseille, I would just be able to pop, or like, I would have a speed boost on, and I would just reverse. 
Um, so Marseille would live this probably and I could just peek way easier back and forth. Um, this ship can't do it, so do I care? No. no. Just don't, look, 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 now I went a bit forward and it just doesn't slow down. Doesn't want to. Hit three shells on the turrets, but a double fire though. I can use my smoke here actually uh, against the Hindenburg or Kedakami spotting because they sit in the corner and actually shoot the, uh, the Yumihara is in my smoke hard light but I can reverse around the rock. I'm just uh, extremely disappointed. I am going to make like the video now. I'm going to tell you that this ship is definitely not worth it if you don't have mad resources left. And after that uh, I'm not going to play this ship again. Um, it's just I don't know why this ship even exists, dude. Like, why doesn't it get uh, a bit of armor or better gun performance or more utility, like in a super healer or something? Like, anything to help it with. Instead, it's just everything is put into six guns, which isn't even that much. And yeah, everything else about the ship sucks cock. Like, it literally has nothing else to offer. And he's dead. We're healing back up. Um, people are just suiciding into me. Look how long I glide before I have to... Oh, this ship is so annoying, I swear to god, it's so fucking annoying. And here comes the 7k nearly HE volley with fire. So, yeah. Cool, cool amount of damage that I'm taking here. Thankfully I yeeted him with a sit, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to live this. No reason for him to go flat again, by the way. Can only say that. Uh, Kirakami is shooting me. Uh, torping me. He's not shooting me. He's torping me. Now you just sit here and you relax and you're gaming. There's a potential submarine kill in my face. I mean, I got a kill already, so theoretically I can get my Cunningham proc. To maybe give me an additional heal. Maybe I can rejoin the battle for a bit more, like last game, with the Cunningham proc. That would be pretty cool, but obviously I don't know if it happens. Uh, as you can see, the shells are so lazy that I can lob this island at uh, 10 kilometers. Oh wait, submarine is lit. Ah, submarine is leaving my, my range. Mm, yeah, you can HE Citadel Kirakami, especially with this thing. I mean, most uh, something... Probably I'm going to play Kirakami, so I can... At some point I'm going to play it. I mean, I haven't, but I'm really interested at the moment. But at some point I can I can show you that... Uh, that, that funny Kirakami gameplay. Did he turn in? He turned in. Okay. Turning it around. I think he's gonna be there. Well, my depth charges should hit him here. Yep. Bunch of more damages, module damage. Tried to shotgun me. Thankfully, he's stupid, so he didn't do it properly. I mean, he used the unguided once, which is actually smart, but he should have done it from way closer. I don't have hydro now, and the Kitakami is in my mouth, so this is a bit of a fucked situation. That thing really hates torpedoes and dodging them. Uh, by the way, he loading AP here is a major mistake. Like, you cannot citadel a. Uh, you cannot really citadel a tier 4 hull with this heavy AP, even if it's slightly short fuse. Um, 
It's just better to use HE and actually try Citadels like that. I think he's trying to torp me on the on the border again, so I will just uh, try and dodge it. 50 seconds for Hydro. My submarine is going for him too, though. And the Catalonia could maybe Citadel him. I can't really with AP. It's extremely sketch. Should I pull a fully ga full gamer turn? I think I should. Yeah. You see? Death Strike with HE. Five shells, but two Citadel, and Citadel damage is uh, 6,100. But yeah. You don't, you don't load a... Uh, hmm? Oh, I didn't see that. Cool. Oh, doesn't matter. Um, didn't even see that he had three launchers on that side. That's crazy. He must have never used that side. I thought two was already a lot because they sep they they load separately, so it's kind of weird that he had a three ready, meaning that he never used that side or he didn't use it for uh, like three minutes, more than three minutes. Well, I mean, once again, some. Some decent gameplay here against low tiers. I mean, I took a bunch of shit from the sub. Still managed to get some kills and damage. Is it really the ship? Or is it just that I'm playing against two tiers lower? Uh, no 30 over match. And stupid people on top of that, because the Hindenburg just went flat. The Rupert died instant. The battleships just went flat and died. But like, yeah. It really is not admirable or advisable to get this ship. It is not. Um, also, if you think about the fact that they announced it's going to be out of the game for only a year and then they will bring it back with some resource, probably like Research Bureau, I would assume. Uh, Research Bureau or Steel. You can probably get it for way cheaper uh, if you really want it by then. But for now, there's just too much lacking on that boat. It doesn't offer... it, Or it doesn't bring the needed attributes that you need for the gameplay. A 40 millimeter side plating would probably be a nice addition and an icebreaker. I mean, it would be borderline broken then. It could become broken real quick. But I mean, currently it's just shit. I mean, it's just shit. I mean, sitting around somewhere and sp spitting HE at mid to, long, mid to long range with some smokes is not really a gameplay I'm looking forward in World of Warships. I already dislike perma kiting ships. I mean, I don't really enjoy ships that have zero utility and just sit somewhere and spam people. We don't have a carrier, so we will never see theirs. Oh my god, I actually did not hit him. Well, I mean, you baited him into shooting and then he went spotted. He load AP now against the Edinburgh. That's obviously a great strength of it. Improved improved pen angles, slightly shorter fuse, have uh, overmatch AP from cruises against light cruises. Obviously, mad crazy. I'm pretty sh much shit on any light cruiser. Then again, if you don't one shot something like a Smolly and it smokes up in front of you, you're just suffering. You're just suffering. I mean, the carrier will just kill me here and then the game is over. And then we can finally leave the ship in port and never touch it again. Because I'm I'm not a big fan. I am not. I think it's also one of the ships I have the worst win rate on. I mean, sure, I got a bit unlucky with a lot of sub games. And I uh, had like four or five games where the CV literally just went for me from start to finish. Not a single strike on another ship. Uh, yep. CV scrapes me a bit. 6k. Understandable. Have a great day. You're just too fat, dude. It's like crazy. You're just too fat. And then you're too fat, and then you don't get armor, and you get a lot of superstructure. So it's like, why? Why is it so high in the water but doesn't get plating? I mean, look, Napoli is also high in the water and eats mad cock from AP, but no sits because of the armor scheme, and it can angle and mitigate most of the damage. 
And it's also like super slow. It's also like the thing with the maneuverability. It's only 34.7 and you're like a fat cruiser that, like, I don't know, man. It's extremely weird. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. With Marseille, I go more than 40 knots. It's way lower in the water and it accelerates and decelerates and turns way quicker than this. Like... Look at how sluggish it handles. I don't know. Um, main issue I really have with it is um, that you you can't really decelerate and accelerate fast. And like getting into acceleration and going like fast, it, it takes ages. And then at some point it just goes mad crazy. And then you can't slow it down anymore. And this is like fatal bullshit if you're sitting on a rock and you're trying to peak and disengage properly if your boat is not moving immediately. It's also why Ledge Mod Des Moines is so strong because you can abuse islands like crazy. Venezia and defense plus one. Well, that's a joke. Well, I mean, he's sitting somewhere over there. Apparently he doesn't have planes anymore. Uh, can we just hunt him down? <laughs> At least in the last game I played with his boat. I get some sort of... Uh, some sort of... Damage and kills. But the first game is kind of like... What I experienced mostly with it. Carrier going in, dealing 12 point something K. First strike, coming back. He would like... Any sort of carrier armament fucks you over. And then... Like, the submarines. Submarines really don't allow you to play the game. You're way too fat and stupid. It's... I don't know. Also, I don't really understand why these boats, by the way, never get AA. Um, Marseille also doesn't really get AA, but definitely better AA than this thing here. And also... The air spotting. That's something I do not understand about current World of Warships cruiser balancing either. Like, you get a Castille, you get a Defense, and they're both, like, decent Conceal. Defense actually has crazy Conceal, like, Surface Surp. But then it gets, like, fucking random-ass Air Conceal that fucks you over so bad. You already don't have AA or AA range even on that boat, and still, like, it just fucks you over randomly. Okay. Got some more damage and a fourth kill, and that's it. It's also pretty hard to make, uh, like if you're inexperienced, I would say the ship is not a great choice in the first place. Because if you get stuck in shitty situations or if you overcommit, you're done for in this thing. Also, if you commit to an improper rock or it turns out that the rock doesn't work because the enemy team is like randomly fucking it or blocking it, you're just stuck and it's very hard for you to get use. Like once committed, it's over. Like with a Stalin or something, um, or a Petro, you at least bring uh, Hydro and Radar, or like with Stalin Radar, to the rock, which means even if you dive forward and you get yourself stuck, you can still work some magic from there with defense. You just sit. And also like the peaking becomes is obviously way easier with Stalin and Petro or Marseille, because you don't offer this insanely big schnoz. Like it's, that's, that's just mad. Like, look at how high in the water it sits. Like, how much freeboard it offers. And then look at this insanely wide 25mm nose that leads directly to your sit. And then you compare it to Marseille, which is the thing. And then, like, you see the side plating actually has an outer citadel layer that bounces. Then the freeboard is way less. And the nose is way smaller. And, like, only the shells that really hit the nose can penetrate through into the sit. And anything that's on the sides has probably got a ricochet, so you're way tankier. Like, way, way tankier like that. Also, look at this small superstructure you have with Marseille. It's super low in the water, and most of it is protected by the turrets. And then you put, like, defense next to it, and it's like, you have, like, small turrets, you have mad deck and stuff, and then this insanely large superstructure. And then, like, the entire ass section, by the way, this is why you can't really kite in it. The entire ass section is 25mm. Like, this is fucking atrocious. Like, what the fuck is this? 
it cannot kite, so like you're forced to go nose in, but nose in is only slightly better. And then you look at Marseille and you're like, well, I mean, that's, that's like a very small ass, I would say, but you can actually kite with it. And if you have 36 or 40 millimeter deck armor, by the way, it doesn't really make a difference because it's just important that it's not overmatchable, which 36 isn't neither. Uh, 36 also tanks shaky shells. It's 35 is the next threshold of the, the overmatch PBs. So, yeah, and then people go all crazy about the consistency of those guns, and I'm like, first of all, the 89mm penetration doesn't really give you much. I mean, sure, you penetrate some BB platings that no other cruiser really can, like a Kreml or something, um, or a Vermont. I think Vermont has 51 or so, and Marseille gets like 50, 55. Oh, wait, Vermont has like 50... Was it 51 or 56 that they gave her more? So something, some specific ship doesn't pen. Oh no, it's 51, yeah. So I think Hindenburg doesn't pen it or some shit because Hindenburg is 50. Something like that, yeah. There was some weird stuff about it. So like, Marseille gets 55 millimeters of pen, which means like you penetrate like mm, pretty much every BB and cruiser plating too. Uh, you also penetrate Stalin and Moscow 50 millimeters and stuff. So you don't need a defense. The only thing you additionally pen is like IGN deck armor, I think, because it's 57 and uh, Russian battleship uh, Kreml, Uchakov, which you penetrate. But like Marseille already penetrates all other BBs, German, whatever the fuck. And then you go like, well, I mean, defense brings more consistency. And it doesn't really. Like it literally doesn't. The Marseille gets literally three guns more. Uh, so even though it has trolley or dispersion, it's just more shells and Marseille gets a reload boost, which means you can literally shit shells five times a game whenever you want on demand. Like you can either AP reload boost the flat broadside, which gives you then, what is it, 18 shells in the same duration that defense sends, uh, what is it, 12? And you just get them even, like you get the second volley faster, way faster than the defense. No, actually wrong. If defense shoots 12 shells, on Marseille you get 27 shells. So, like, fuck your consistency. Marseille gets the same consistency because it has more shells. Then, sure, you don't have the improved pen angles on Marseille, but I'd rather have flatter arcs and faster shell travel time on Marseille. And if you want improved pen angles and short, shorter fuse, you can play Stalin. And it offers the same, but the shells are insanely fast too. And... Also, the HE spam capabilities, like, sure, it depends a bit more, and it has more HE alpha, the defense, but Marseille can also pop a reload boost to get uh, fires after a DCP. And all of this on a hull that's way more tanky, way more nimble and agile, in my opinion. I mean, straight up is, I think. It, it, it moves way better around the Marseille, to be fair, um, because of the speed and the speed boost. And on top of all of this, your base speed or your average traveling speed is like six to seven knots faster than the defense. So you're actually like a fast ship. Like if you compare both ships, defense and Marseille, it's the perfect example that if you want more consistent guns and you drop everything else for it, the ship doesn't become better. The ship becomes way worse because you'd rather have um, the hull, the utility in terms of speed boost and reload boost, but the guns are performing worse uh, in terms of dispersion at least. Uh, the rest is kind of comparable or even better on Marseille in, in any case. So like, yeah, it, it's it's an idiot bait, the defense. It is. It's kind of like Stalin is also some sort of idiot bait these days because you burn down very fast. You die very fast in Stalin if you don't play it properly. But it's it's like extremely punchy and rewarding if you position right or if people are stupid and turn flat um, with Stalin. The thing is with Stalin, I can force people to fuck their angling against either me or someone because I can go nose in and I do have an icebreaker so that's the same with Petro by the way those ships can actually insert massive pressure and at the same time while they're on a rock they have an offensive tool to zone what's fucking them meaning destroyers specifically um, I can raider them away in defense I do not only have to f get fucked by subs like on any other ship um, and a carrier like any other ship but on on uh, on defense, I also have to eat mad DD shit because I can't do anything against them in Stalin and Petro or even Moskva. I, probably Stalin is a best comparison because it's also a heavy cruiser, like same, similar gun caliber. It's a bit lower gun caliber, but still. Um, 
Like I can at least zone the DD away, right? And then I have better AA too, by the way. Like at least I shoot down some planes on Petro Stalin or even Marseille has like kind of Des Moines AA. Like the defense has zero AA. And yeah, well, I mean, obviously the armor scheme, like I actually have armor on this fucking boat. And once again, with the HE penetration, the HE on Stalin also pens 51. So you pen like half the ships and yeah, you get nine shells instead of six with your with your main guns while your reload is like barely more i think what's wait what's the reload 18 and like defense with reload mod has like 15 or something like the, the reload is way too long for it 15.8 so it's like two seconds more on stalin or three seconds more with with like arguably better guns by the way the, no don't get it just like unless you really want to have it as a collector or something the ship is just not good um, once again, to sum it up, uh, or like not to sum it up, to to end it with like the torpedoes. Also, you're just not able to properly use them in most scenarios because your nose in gameplay only works to a limited extent and peaking the same way. So like you will have situations where you can use the torps, but um, it's not something you can actually go for. Like, if it had an icebreaker, then your torps would be extremely oppressive against most ships because you could just shove into them and torp them out. But, like, now with no icebreaker and this weird shitty shaped hull, like, for example, improved penetration angles can't go through here like butter, Stalin, Petro, whatever the fuck, you just can't really uh, mong into them. Well, that's about it. Um, that's my take on defense. And I will see you in the next video. Adiós, friends.